zomaar een stapeltje uitslagen. En uh, dat is nog maar het topje van de ijsberg hier in uh, Huizen van den Broek. Ja, als Peter van der Vorst een keer langskomt voor uh, opruimen, dan uh, heeft hij wel een paar dagen werk en uh, een container nodig voor de hele papierwinkel. Maar voorlopig laten we het nog eventjes uh, in huis. Wie weet wat we er nog aan hebben. Bijvoorbeeld voor Trikipedia. Oh ja, dat brengt me meteen op een idee. Um, want ik kom natuurlijk nog wel eens bekende namen tegen. En één naam valt wel, springt er natuurlijk toch altijd wel uit als je vanaf 83 tot nu actief bent en uh, redelijk uh, prominent in de wedstrijden voorkomt. Rob Barel. Um, ik weet nog dat ik erbij mocht zijn toen hij in Parijs zijn honderdste triathlon deed. Dat was nog niet zo'n honderdste overwinning. Maar volgens mij zit hij daar ook al wel aan. En dat is nou precies de vraag. Hoeveel overal overwinningen boekte Rob Barel? En dan hebben we het in dit geval over triathlons, cross triathlons en ook nog zijn kano triathlons. De duathlons hebben we even buiten beschouwing gelaten. Dus het aantal overal zegens. Uh, als je de veteranen titels er nog bij zou pakken, dan wordt het helemaal oneindig. Die tellen we niet mee. Rob Barel. Tussen, wat zal het zijn, 1983 en nu. Hoeveel zegens. Succes. To put something together, and uh, I really do hope you enjoy this evening's performance. So, this is last year's, this is the first official long distance world championships. Of course, Nice has been going for many years, it's been very popular with the athletes, and it really does have a classic distance. Four kilometer swim, about the only race in the sport that has a four kilometer swim, 120 kilometers of biking and 30 kilometers of run to finish. And indeed, last year they did change the run course. It used to be 15 k's down the promenade des Anglais towards Antibes, turn around and come back again. But last year, and you can see the marshal. Well, I think there's a gnomon there, isn't there? A moral. Get out of the way, marshal. Let them get on with the business. But normally, the 2,000 athletes or so start in one. But last year, they changed it because this was the World Championship. So the world elite men went off first, and then the, the, uh, the ladies went a few minutes later. So this was the men's start. Something like 150 athletes from uh, countries all over the world. Something like 35 different countries were here competing. And, uh, well, the weather wasn't too pleasant. It was dry before the start, but during the swim section, as you'll see, it really, uh, the heavens did open. I've covered this a bit. I'm not going to argue with that statement, but it was uh, voted by a triathlete magazine. They gave it to her. And heard of meter for France a couple of years ago. His brother, I think, was ranked, still ranked something top 15 in the world. So this is the final boy, then it's... Uh, I say final, they've still got two kilometers along the beach to go. Well, just under two kilometers. So here they go. This is the lead pack of five with uh, Jerome Sanson, the Frenchman, out front. We've got uh, Simon Lessing is there. The far side of the picture, just easing over. Nearest the camera, that looks like Nick Croft. And although the weather wasn't too friendly, it was still good enough for our underwater camera. You see the rain is just starting to come down. as Jerome Sanson there. Pops his way back towards the finish. Classical long distance style, very similar to Wolfgang Dietrich. Of course, it's been out of the water many times here. For lead woman was Rena Bradshaw. She set the pace throughout the four kilometer swim as the men now come up towards the end of that opening swim. So, this is uh, Sanson, the brother. His brother uh, wasn't racing here today, but Jerome was certainly representing his country, France, for the first time in the long distance championships. Because, of course, these were the first long-distance championships. This used to be classed as the uh, the World Championship for long distance back in the early days before the International Triathlon Union, the governing body since 1989, was for formed. There was uh, Nice and Hawaii, were both self-acclaimed long-distance championships. Nice dropped the name. But, uh, well, that's Croft coming out in second place. Lessing was out in third position. But it's Yves Cordier is in fourth, I think. But it's Jerome Samson coming up now into the transition. Nick Croft is behind. You can see they've already grabbed their uh, helmets. Compulsory, of course, in the sport of triathlon. Certainly compulsory on this course, because this really is a real roller coaster, 120 kilometers on the bike. This is Simon Lessing, though, coming out of the transition area. He's, what, in third or fourth position at the moment. Well into contention. He's hoping for a good race here. 
is our lead woman, Rena Bradshaw. Times, by the way, well, they're out in about 48 minutes. The women, they're out in about 52 minutes. That looks like Roll uh, Christensen there of Norway, just in front. This is Rena Bradshaw, the Australian. Did well on the uh, World Cup last year over the, well, it was, uh, I think we can still call it the Olympic distance, because that's what it was called then. We can't call it it now, but we still do. Uh, so this is Bradshaw going through. Good support from many of the age groupers who still haven't started. Yves Cordier took the lead on the early part of the bike. He's done this on numerous times before, and his failing has always been on the run. He's tried and tried at Nice, but he's never quite done it. Best performance was back in uh, 1992 when he was second. This is Rena Bradshaw. First effort over this uh, longer distance. She's more used to the shorter distance, so she's certainly faring well at the moment. Her country man, Nick Croft, He's in second position behind Yves Cordier as they make, or he starts the long climb up towards uh, Gillette, Boyon, and then the descent down into Requestron. Karen Smyers, though, the Austra American, should I say, she went past Rena Bradshaw on the first climb. This is Karen Smyers, the uh, what, 31 year old from Lincoln, Massachusetts, graduate of Princeton University. She took the lead as Nick Croft stayed in second place behind. Uh, Cordier, and unfortunately for Simon Lessing, his hopes for a win were dashed. Not only did he have one puncher, but he had two punches, and uh, well, that was the end of his day for him. So it left Yves Cordier, and you can see the weather really is clamping in, or it clamped in last year, should I say. Uh, fortunately, this year's race, the weather was a little better, as you'll see later. But this is Cordier on this classic bike course. In fact, many classic bike rides go over these hills in the Alp Maritime, and uh, it certainly is unique within the sport. And for my money, this is the best bike course, the most interesting, the most testing, the challenging. It has everything. Long climbs, fast, steep descents. You have to be very good technically on the bike. You can see one of the problems is today, though, on the bend, it's a bit slippery and a slidey. And, uh, well, there were many accidents, and in fact, we'll see a couple in this broadcast. But this is Corgonier. He's still leading his merry way on the bike course as Isabel Mouton. Well, she made her move on the bike section. She went past Bradshaw, and she's only got Karen Smiles now ahead of her. So is Isabel Mouton, the French lady from Annecy, one of the twins, she won this race last year. And she's looking to do the same this year. This is uh, Rob Burrell, Bobby Barrell. He's back in about fourth, fifth position at the moment, and he's coming now towards the descent before they climb back up to Gillette. And he's been very tentative indeed, and you can see why. Even the classic Rob Burrell comes to drift. But fortunately for Rob and all of us, he was safe. He had a bit of road rash, but he got up and he continued, as you'll see. But it's still Yves Cordier leading the men's division. This is him, the sun goddess. Best position, if I recall, in Ironman was eighth back in uh, 1989, but it was third at Nice in 88 and 91. Champion of Europe in Estoril. I was there, I remember that race well back in 1989. For me, that was a great race for uh, Yves Cordier, and he's never really got back to that form. He really has suffered from injuries. He's got back problems, leg problems. He's had a couple of operations, but not Isabel Mouton. 1994 was a great year for Isabel Mouton, and I suppose this was her best race. Karen Smiles, well, she's still led on the bike, but closely followed by Isabel Mouton. And one thing uh, Karen doesn't like <laughs> is the slippery, slidey roads. You can see one of our competitors here has come to grief. He's had to retire, and I suppose that's the only way back. This is, uh, well, there's another one going over. They really did go over like flies. The Robin Brew only lasted, what, two meters, or 200, uh, two kilometers, rather, down the uh, Promenade des Anglais before he punched it, and uh, I remember he threw his bike down in disgust. He did have a great crash, I recall, what, back in 1989 or so. So that was Karen Smyers taking it nice and easy, because, of course, after the 120 kilometers of biking, they've still got 30 kilometers of run to finish. But this is Yves Cordier, come down past the airport. He's back on the Promenade des Anglais as the waves crash in on the beach that is normally filled with the, uh, the sun bathers, well, the sun goddess, he hasn't got the sun today, but Isabel Mouton, she's certainly doing the business. So this is Mouton, she's taken the lead from Karen Smyers towards the latter part of the bike road, right, as Yves Cordier now comes back 
down the promenade des Anglais to this huge transition area. Something like 2,000 bikes in the transition, and that uh, causes a problem in itself. You see all the cones, that's for the run once they finish. So the marshals are slowing Cordier down because there's a bit of a sharp turn before he turns into the transition. As with normal, the crowds were out in the force last year, out in their thousands to support, especially the local favourite, Yves Cordy. I remember when he moved to Nice, Nice moved from Nice, sorry, to Monaco to race for them, but he still gets great applause in his home city. He really is a hero here, and they would love dearly for him to win this classic event of Europe. For many years, it's been the ultimate European triathlon. So this is Yves Cordier setting off on the final 30-kilometer four-lap bike ride. Second in Lothar Leder, he made his move towards the end of the bike ride, caught up Robbie Burrell. So after that uh, tumble, the spill of Burrell, he's got up and he's come back in in second position with the German Lothar Leder. But it's still Yves Cordier out on the... 30 kilometer final run course as Isabel Mouton now makes her way back down the promenade des Anglais preparing herself for the final run wearing that lovely remember this new last year the, uh, the French uniform as the American Karen Smiles she's in second position this is the dreaded road rash of Rob Burrow and the problem is once you get this road rash whenever you fall off it always seems to be on the same uh, the place. I think they call it Sod's Law, don't they? But this is Mouton back into the transition area for the final time. And now it's a quick change, get the running shoes on, then out on the final 30 kilometer run. Bobby Barrel and Lothar Leder, the young German, they really did have a battle. Lothar Leder, he did everything last year. Remember, he went uh, down to Strongman in Japan, he won there and uh, did a couple of Ironman. And then came and did Nice as well. Had a great race as well. So that's Cordier still leading. Smiles went out on the run in second position. But she's uh, a minute or so behind Isabel Mouton. In fact, she's more than that. She's about five minutes behind Isabel Mouton. But this is Cordier. You can see he's a very upright runner. His stature is very upright because he's got this back problem, leg problem. He really is, uh, well, in British terms, I suppose, a KOS. I won't uh, tell you what the abbreviation means. But it wasn't long. It was after about 10 kilometers that he uh, was passed by both Lothar Leder and Rob Burrell. And then they had to battle it out for this first world long-distance title. So Cordier, you can see he's very despondent. He's a bit upset that he hasn't been able to hold on. But at least uh, well, a couple of years ago, when Lessing and uh, Alan went past him, I know he was sat on the road crying. This is Mouton now. Jonathan Asprey of Great Britain right beside her. So he's dropped a bit. This is his first attempt, though, here at Nice. The Smiles was in second position, but it's Bobby Barrow. He's got away from Lothar Leder now on the closing stages of the 30-kilometer run. So the Flying Dutchman, he's flying perhaps to his second win here at Nice. He won back in, what, 1988, first European to win. In fact, the only European male ever to win this. This lady, Isabel Mouton, was the first European woman to win. Lothar Leder is in second position, digging deep. Great performance by Lothar Leder. He's only dropped a few seconds from Rob Burrell as Burrell now comes in to the huge support to be the 1994 ITU long distance world champion. And isn't he happy? It was going to be his swan song year, 1994. He told me at the end of the year he's retiring, but, uh, well, he's come out and he's racing again in 1995. You can't keep him off the swim, the bike, and the run, the sport of triathlon. So that's Rob Burrell. He's home first in five hours, 59 minutes, 47 seconds. That reflects, I think, the bad weather, the slow bike course that they had today. And uh, Lothar Leder, he's in second place, six hours and 18 minutes. So that really is a tremendous performance by the young uh, German. And Yves Cordier, well, he had to be satisfied with third position. Six hours, three minutes and nine seconds. The Germans, well, they took the team.